If you've been following me on social media or on this channel, you will probably recognize this project. I've, I've mentioned it in the background of some things and I did a, a sliding door gear review, which you'll find on my, my playlist on my channel, uh, where I showed the door gear we used. Now I didn't do a complete build video as I often do with these kind of slightly unusual builds. And one of the reasons was I was pretty sure I would end up back fixing something on this. And a couple of weeks ago, I did get that call, which I was dreading, but expecting to say that these doors had bent. It doesn't show up too clearly as you look at the thing, that they look all right. If you look closely, it becomes quite obvious where this one should clear the inner carcass, it is just catching. And you can see the bend because it should be that kind of distance away. I think it was about 12, maybe 15 millimeters, which I thought would be plenty of clearance, but it has bowed in by that amount. So we're, we're back to fix it using some Plano Fit door straighteners. And I want to show you how those work because I couldn't find a video about those working on YouTube. So if you're needing to fix some, I hope this will be very useful for you. Just before I show you all of that, I want to talk a little bit why, about why these bent. Now it is something that can easily happen with uh, solid wood, well wood, sorry, wood-based board products uh, without an aluminium frame. And I think it's one reason why a lot of sliding doors you have an aluminium or a steel section frame, which gives the rigidity. The problem you have using uh, something like veneered MDF, which is what this is, is uh, under its own weight, it is prone to, to bend. These ones are bottom running. Um, it can also happen if they're top running. Um, generally, the sliding door hardware is fitted to the back, so the center of gravity of the board is offset from the hardware that it's fixed on, be it top or bottom mounted. So it's not a great surprise this has happened. These doors were only 16 millimeters thick, I hoped that the bowing would be prevented by having the solid oak frame. However, I think what's happened is it's made it worse. So this frame, it's 32 millimeters thick and it's, it's flush to the back. So you can see it's been fixed with pocket hole screws and dominoes. Flush to the back, projecting at the front by, well, about 16 millimeters. And then we've got these solid oak, these solid oak details here. This design, I wouldn't probably have designed it that way, but there's a, an existing sliding door set upstairs, which is top hung off a purlin, which we didn't feel we could do off this ceiling. And that had much the same design, but just with a, a different sort of central panel detail, but it was in, in construction, it was essentially your 16 millimeter board. Actually, I think there might've been 12 millimeter, but then a, a solid frame of the same proportions. So although I had my reservations about building the doors these way, this way, I thought, well, they've been built that way upstairs and they're okay. Actually, when it, when it came down to it and these started to show some signs of bowing after we fitted them, I went and looked again at the door upstairs and, and it is bowed, but it doesn't jump straight out at you and it's not bowed enough to foul on anything. But it's a basic issue with the, the design of the door because particularly in this room where it gets evening sun. The, the oak wants to shrink a little bit as it's gone from relatively moisture laden air in the timber yard and the workshop to a, a dry, warm house. The, the oak wants to shrink and reduce in length, but it's restrained at the back of the panel where it's fitted flush. So its shrinkage has to occur near the front so all of the doors have bowed in the same direction for that reason. So I will get on to uh, showing you how I fit the, the Plano Fit door straighteners. They're a bit of hardware that comes from Hayfully. And as I say, I hope that'll be very useful to you if you find yourself in this situation. Okay, so here's an overview for you of how it works. This over here is the test piece that we made in the workshop. This piece of, I think it's nine millimeter uh, birch plywood is, might be six millimeter. Uh, that is the jig, which we used in the workshop to make this. Uh, I've laid all the pieces out so you can see what goes where. I'll talk you through that in a minute. 
You can see on the jig some workings out where we were trying to figure out the right combination of router cutter and bushing. What we settled on, which was partly just based on what we had, was a 6mm mil, six cutter in a 20mm bushing. Our first attempt, we were, we were sort of fixated on the difference between the, the final cup size and the jig, the final cup size being 35mm, like a hinge, and we got it all set up using a 12mm cutter and a 30mm bushing, only to realise that the 30mm bushing, oh no, sorry, no, the, the, the issue was only to realise that the 12mm cutter wouldn't cut the 10mm hole which is required. So we, we had to have a smaller, a smaller cutter and a smaller bushing. So onto the parts and how it's all going to work. We are looking for a 12.5mm depth cup hole and an 8mm slot. So into the cup hole goes one of these. Now that is different at the top to the one at the bottom. And the one at the bottom takes a square nut. The one at the top is where the adjustment works, which will take a normal nut with washers either side, and the size of that gap just allows you the adjustment. So that will end up pushed into there and covered with a snap-on cover cap, so it looks like that. Connecting the two is your bit of threaded bar, which uh, I haven't checked, but I think it's probably an M6, an M6 threaded rod. That goes inside this, which is an enclosed channel, and that ends up held in place by four of these simple plastic fixings. In terms of sizing it, the centres of the cup holes need to be no more than 250 millimetres from the top of the door. There's, I don't think there's guidance on how far from the edge of the door things should be. There's just guidance on if you have a door 600 millimetres or more wide, you want to have two. So we created the jig so that if you just line up the side of the jig to the side of the door, the centre line is 150 millimetres from the edge. That just seemed like it would be about right. So we'll see how we go with that. We made the jig itself the height of the doors, all planned that way in the workshop. And since bringing it to sight, I've just cut out the corners so I don't have to take the siding door hardware off. I've also pre-drilled and countersunk just four holes for 17mm screws. I thought four would be enough to hold it in place. This all has to be done quite quick because we've got six doors, which means 12 of these to fit, and it's costing me money because I'm putting right a bow in the door. That shouldn't have happened, so I'm not charging any extra for it. So the next thing is that Jonathan, who's set up with the workbench just outside, and the metal cutting saw, he's going to cut He's going to cut these threaded bars to length. Now if we planned it better, we might not have even had to cut them to length. We probably could have made the jig a bit longer, but the way it worked out was we're just cutting a small amount off of them to meet up with these calculations here. So we've got a centre to centre measurement of 1884 millimetres. These calculations then show us that our plastic channel needs to be cut at 37 millimetres shorter than the centre to centre length, um, which gives us a sort of bit of a bit of play there where it's going to meet those metal things. So we'll be cutting that to 1847 and the threaded bar will be cutting to 20 millimetres longer than the centre to centre mark. So that gives you a bit of play because what's going to happen with the straightening system is you adjust the nut that's at the top and that lengthens or shortens the threaded bar which depending on the direction of the curve that you're trying to remove you, you either lengthen or shorten it so that that bar needs a bit of play within its within its slot and that 20 millimeters oversizing gives you 10 millimeters 
you're on the centre line at each end, so there's a bit of movement within the cup hole there. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say was I've set up my router because I've got two I've got two depths of cut to do and it all needs to be done efficiently. We've got a 12.5 millimeter cut depth and the eight millimeter channel depth. I've set the router up already with the uh, tower stops so that I can just spin between between the stop that it's over now and that's all the one there and that'll help me to spin between the two drop-in depths so I can quickly just get it all done and hopefully have a good, a good workflow going. So Jonathan's just set up here for cutting the threaded bars using the evolution saw that will cut metal. He's worked out the measurement and given himself an end stop there so that the, the cut piece ends up at the right length. He's pre-threaded the nut on there because it's going to be harder to thread on once you cut the end so we thought we'd just pre-thread it. Clamped it there so it's, it's secure even though there's a nut there lifting it up it'll be fine like that. Um, and I've just told him to take extra care because with that being enclosed there it can't drop off to the end. Once that's cut through it could fly anywhere so let's just let's watch the cut. I've got my goggles on as well. Go ahead Jonathan. Yeah, well that's that, that's done. So that's a lot quicker than a hacksaw cut, and he'll be he'll be doing the same just gently with the with the plastic excuse, extrusions, which could easily be cut by a hacksaw, but we reckon it will it will cut okay on that saw. Yeah. So I'm happy with the routing. The channel starts to go in, but has a bit of resistance on the little ribs there. But I'm pretty confident it will knock in. So I'm going to go ahead and fit it. Now with the sizing that we talked about earlier, just come out of here, Jonathan. The if you line it up just around about to the, the start of that curve into the hole, then it seems to be about centered. Now, contrary to what I said at the start of the video, when we the start of the video, I've decided to put the adjustable, the adjustable fitting, the one that would receive the spanner, at the bottom, because if you look at the arrangement here, the bottom is a lot more accessible whereas the top adjustment would be above that shelf and less well lit so I figure it's not going to affect the functioning of the thing much if it's at the top or bottom so what I need to do is position the, the bar within the extrusion and get my bolts to roughly where I think they need to be and then just knock this in Now I'm really happy with how tight that is. I'll carry that on along. We'll keep we'll keep rolling, but I'll just speed it up probably. Yeah, that's a really good fit. So now we've got the fitting that goes over the more square shaped bolt. Come on in a bit closer. So that needs to be moved to where it's about in the center. I just want to make sure that the amount of thread that goes beyond it is about right. And um, when, when we actually adjust, adjust it, this of course, this will stay the same. This is the fixed end really. The other end, I want to know that, there we go, that's, that's fine. So if you come over to the other end, I want to know that it will allow me some tensioning um, without this hitting the end of the hole there. Now this is the one that needs the washers on because it's the one that will move. And they 
they'll both fit in there. Yes, yeah, so that's about right. Now, if you think about it, the, the way the door's bowing is, is like that. The middle of the back is coming up in this arrangement. So the threaded bar is set uh, just slightly off, it's set off center towards the back. So we're gonna to want to tension it to pull the back in. So when I do adjust it, I'll be moving, I'll be moving this nut uh, this way, so the nut will try and move down the threaded bar. So I wanna make sure that, come on in closer again, Jonathan. I, just want to, I definitely do wanna make sure that there's enough clearance here that I can get the tension that I need. Um, and I would have thought I'd, I'm not going to have to be tensioning it more than that. To be on the safe side, it might just be worth me seeing if I can... No, I don't think I can. I was going to see if I could turn that in there. But I, I, think, we'll be, I think we'll be fine at that. Yeah, so we're ready, we're ready to screw all that on, um, which I, I'll just do now, and again, I can speed that up. To these things we've got an equal spacing for four of them. I'm just going to use the original test piece to just eye in that spacing because I don't think it's really critical. I just want to be fairly evenly spaced. And of course their purpose is as tension is put on the rod to prevent it wanting to lift up and out. So that's all done. Now we did we did a test on the test piece with tensioning and found that it, it would bend the board. So I'm pretty confident this is going to function as it should. So I'm going to go ahead and get them all on the doors and uh, I think we'll then put them in place and do the tensioning because gravity could affect it. So I think they want to be in place and then tensioned until they straighten out in place. So I will, I'll show you that process next. We've put the two doors on and we've put the uh, the plano fit strips in, that was just catching on the strip itself. You see, that's how bowed it is, that it's really scraping. And we've, we've replaced the track. <clears throat> so you can see on the front track, where we've taken these two doors off, the way we got the doors off was just by removing that section of the track, bringing them along and taking them off. Um, so we've, we've put these back on, put that top bit of track on, on the rear, and I'm going to move it along now to where I can move it to where I can access the adjustment so you can just come around and we'll see if we can see all this it's going to be a bit tight so here's my place where I can get the, uh, the spanner in now we're wanting to to shorten this rod so it puts tension on the back so it forces the middle to bow forward I'm pretty sure that's correct which means we're turning, we're turning this this way. Now it'll be interesting to see if we start if we start to remove that bow as we do this. So you, you can see that quite clearly by the fact that it's touching, it's touching the carcass there. Now I suppose ideally we'd be we'd be adjusting both in tandem. I'm just going to see if we get to the point where you start to see a correction in the bend just by doing this one. is concerning me slightly now because I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to get to the maximum adjustment with the amount I'm having to do. I think we're starting to, starting to see a correction because that was, that was skimming at the middle and it's now maybe three millimetres off. So it is doing its job. I think we're at the point though where that rod is hitting the MDF at the bottom of that 35mm hole. 
So I'm going to do the same on the other side, see how far we get, and it might be then that I have to cut more of a more of a notch here to give us the adjustment we need. So now that we've established that the movement of the nut is only going to be that way, shortening, shortening that, putting that, that under tension, pulling it in, that is to say, I'm making the gap here bigger so that, that bar's got further to move down. And by the way, it did it did work very well. We've we've done that on both these doors and got a nice even gap. But I, I felt like maybe that was starting to dig into the MDF and just forcing a hole through. So I put that near the end, which means that this one has the bar that's going to end up nearer the top. But I know that's not a problem because that that won't need to move that way because that's not the sort of adjustment that we will end up having to do.